Just a few milligrams of sea snake venom is enough to kill 1,000 adults. Then she does something even Yatesy wouldn't dare. Grab it. <laughs> She's crazy. I have just got a phone call and yeah, there's a um, rat up in the bowl, so. A rat in the skater bowl? No, that's not in the manual. When I get to the skate bowl, the coppers are doing nothing. So I was kind of like, it's a rat. Like, I'll do it, like, who cares? I jumped in thinking I was six foot tall and bulletproof. That quickly changed. Why did I drop into the bowl with no shoes on? That's just plain old Jesse just doing things before he thinks. I just held the bucket behind it and just slid straight in. Job done, how easy was that? <laughs> as soon as I looked at it, it was just eye contact and it was just like, bang, let's go. And I was kind of like, whoa. I didn't think rats were vicious. <laughs> thing just charged at me. <laughs> How am I going to get this now? You know, I'm eating humble pie, got my tail between my legs, and I'm just thinking, oh, there's no way I'm going to get this thing into the box. <laughs> oh, my God! That was so funny. <laughs> 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 What's the dance, man? Why I know. One of the other grommets ran down and put the lid on it for me, so I didn't have to have any close contact with it, and I still look like a hero. It's fully jumped on my face. <laughs> Definitely, I knew it wasn't my jacket, as if I'd use my jacket to put on a rat. <laughs> Bondi rat Frank lives another day, and brave Harrison shows how it's done. You know, where Jesse went wrong is he let his guard down and he didn't get one of the other kids to do it for him. <laughs> so funny. You had it in the bucket and it jumped and you hit it again. It was like... <laughs> the lifeguard's operations manual is a very important book, but I definitely don't think there's anything about catching rats out of a bowl at the skate park. The fear of sharks lurks in the back of every swimmer's mind. But at nearby Tamarama, beachgoers have encountered a completely unexpected threat. What is a snake doing on the beach at Tamarama? <laughs> What's it doing? Oh. Here? What's it doing? <laughs> a snake on the beach at Tamarama? <laughs> This job, this job freaks me out sometimes, seriously. Tamarama lifeguards to Bondi lifeguards. Um, I'm just down the southern end of Tamarama Beach and I've got a, what looks to be a black snake. So can you please uh, make a phone call to get a ranger down here or someone down here? Because I don't know what to do with this thing. Over. Yeah, so was it Sydney Wildlife? Yeah. She rents as a sea snake. Because she said black snakes won't go into rocks. A lot of lifeguards to 10 minute lifeguards. Huh? And they said a black snake, if it's a red bellied black snake, it won't go under a rock. And if it's a sea snake, the tail should be flat. No, no, it's, yeah, yeah. no, mate, it's a dead set black snake. Yeah, the tail is definitely not flat, and it definitely has a red underbelly, and it's just like cruising around the rocks at the moment and onto the sand. Um, over. Yeah, that sounds about right. She said it won't hide, it'll keep going around, moving around. Yeah, it's definitely a black snake, 100%. They don't know how far away the guy is. Yeah, copy, Bruce. Um, the sooner the better. It's wearing its head and it doesn't look too happy. Yeah, right, clear. All right, where's this ranger? I want this snake off my beach. <laughs> A volunteer wildlife ranger finally arrives. Hey, how are you? No one knows. Oh, this is the first time Jody's ever been called on to catch a black snake. Has anyone, anyone got a size got nine size sand shoes? I need enclosed shoes. Everyone Smooth. can just move back, please. I don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah. And it's already distressed. Guys, move back. Everybody move back. clear out. On the concrete, please. Everybody clear out. Your hair will. <laughs> Then she does something even Yatesy wouldn't dare. Then she tried to grab it. <laughs> she's crazy. How's your pulse? From it. <laughs> but it's not a pulse. She's probably doing about 150, I reckon. She's a bit, she's a bit freaked out. Right? 
By now, this black snake is in a very dark mood. Don't let it go. Snake out. Call it a day. Good job, Jody. Well done, madam. Sterling effort. Thank you, and thanks for coming down, no Tama. Thank you, Jody. No much. problems. Yeah, thanks very much, Jody. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. We couldn't leave a sea snake swimming close to the flags. No. Um, the preferred option would be to get it out of the water completely. Just a few milligrams of sea snake venom is enough to kill 1,000 adults. They're the most venomous snake in the world. Any update, Tommy? Tommy's a young guy. Some of the, the, the newer members to the team are, are eager to impress, you could say. It's only after Tommy volunteers that he gets all the facts. Yeah, they are super deadly. Um, his exercise all too caution. The second Dino said deadly, that's where I realised I've um, I messed up. People have died from sea snake bites. It's a fact. Yeah, kind of. Just playing with deadly creatures. I'm not scared of snakes. Ah! At least I didn't think I was. After quickly paddling out, Tommy realises he won't be catching the sea snake with his bare hands. New lifeguard Jules has a solution. Troy's gone out to catch the snake with his crate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like the clubbies have got Tommy in the IRB and he might scoop it up. <laughs> That. With the pressure mounting, Tommy turns to his previous experience as a tradie. Being a carpenter, I knew there's a tool for every job. And when I was in the boat, I seen the paddle and I was like, that's the tool for this job. He reached in and grabbed it with the oar and flicked it into the bucket. Job done. <laughs> like a true snake wrangler. They have a <laughs> <laughs> Capturing the sea snake and nobody harmed was the best case scenario. Thank you. Okay. Tommy, you hero. Hi, Pat. Turns out I'm scared of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> You're a legend. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank it's not often we find these things. Um, they're fairly venomous as well. The snake actually recovered, which was really good, and he was released later that day in a secluded beach at the harbour. Tommy's deadly snake capture gets the tick of approval. Tommy gets a bit of praise, I guess, a bit of slap on the back. But what the trainee really wants is a human rescue. I don't know if I would have earned any respect off the boys because of how I was screaming, but I got given a job and I did it. If that's what you want out of your trainee, I'm the man. Lifeguards have spotted something caught in the nets. You're jumping off first. No, I won't. <laughs> that won't be happening. <laughs> the suspected shark needs to be removed, dead or alive. It's a bit dodgy at the moment. It's a bit green. There's not much visibility, so it be interesting to see how we go. Quickers and bacon draw the short straw. What is it? It's a grain earth shark, tragically a protected species. Generally considered harmless, their teeth are still razor sharp. Why would we be doing that? Gases in the shark's decomposing body make it float to the surface. As bacon clowns around, the shark launches a surprise attack. Not smart. Well, shark face moment. to face with the shark and he breathed on me. And oh, never felt more crook. It was disgusting. It was the most disgusting hideous thing you ever saw in your life. Two days later, anxious swimmers report an unwelcome visitor. Yeah, she, she's pointing. She's saying something. I don't know, she looks pretty adamant. She's the shark that was in the net has drifted to shore. 
There's a shark in the rip. <laughs> North of the middle set of flags. You can't leave the thing there. Eh? People are going to freak when they see it. Like, you can't leave it there. Keen to impress, trainee Maxi volunteers for the job. Everyone's happy with that scenario. So he's going to go in and get the shark, and we're all going to stand and watch. You jump down, I'll sit up and wait for you. This is a good utensil. Grab it. Yeah. We'll see how we go. But I'm excited, that's all. I'm excited. Something different. Maxi eventually discovers the lurking troublemaker. It's got to come out of the water. It's dead. It's, you know, we don't want to attract more sharks, and we don't want to scare people. So uh, we'll get it out of the water as the first step. Not experienced in the art of shark rescues, Maxi and Troy attempt a technique normally reserved for unconscious swimmers. With an unconscious person, you roll the board over and flip their arm and use the board to pull their momentum to pull them back onto the board. But I don't think that'll work with a dead shark. They seem to be trying that. They got it up. Oh, Getting it to shore proves harder than imagined. <laughs> <laughs> he had a big rope as he was getting ready to go in the water and he was still in some fancy knots with it. I said, mate, just go in and pull the bloody thing out. Troy and Maxie resort to a two-man drag technique. Mate, not every day at Bondi we, uh, we pull a shark out of the water. The only thing under attack right now are beachgoers' nostrils. It stinks! Well, what are you going to do? Take it up the beach. Get the boys on the shovels and that's it, mate, I reckon. Give it a burial. Grave digging isn't in the lifeguard manual. Trying to put that shark in a plastic bag and take it up to a bin would be, be a horrible, horrible thing to do. <laughs> oh. 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 Say a couple of words, Maxie. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not really good with words, mate, but... Uh, rest in peace. He's, he's rest in peace, mate. He's had a good life, by the sounds of it. Let's just call him Frank. Frank. See you, Frank, mate. Nice knowing you. <laughs> But there are much more common dangers at Bondi. Hi, buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're a special one. Come through. This seat's for you. A sea urchin is a little sea creature with all these little spikes that come off it, and they kind of hide in the rock crevices. Yeah, yeah very nasty. I couldn't believe how many sea urchins were in his foot. That's the worst I've seen. Went to jump off the jump rock and I came back and then a wave came and swooped me over and tried go. to stand up and I fell through a hole. And now all you got to do is be strong for the next 40. It's terrible. You look Worse like than a blue Sea urchin spikes carry toxin and are extremely brittle. Like needles of fine porcelain, they easily break, usually once they've penetrated the skin. What's your name, buddy? Uh, Cameron. Cameron, I'm Harrison. I'm your surgeon for today. Jesse and Harrison start the delicate operation, removing the spines one at a time. Yeah. Oh, that one. These are real tricky because they're so small, and poor Cameron here, once he steps in them, um, they just snap off. It's just, yeah, tweezers your only hope. Otherwise, you might have to go to the medical centre and. The little warrior took it on, mate. He was like a little soldier. He, he didn't complain once about pain. And, mate, I, at one stage, I was digging into his foot. Oh, look at that one. That one, mate, that's that was, a, that was, that was the, the biggest one. worm in there. You all right? I feel so sorry doing that to Cameron because he was in a lot of pain. But we just had to get them out as best, you know, as quick as we can. I'm pretty positive I've got all of them out. Jesse and Harrison have taken 45 minutes to remove all the spines from Cameron's foot. Good work, mate. You're an absolute legend. It's like nothing else you've ever felt before, like miniature knives just going into your foot and then when they're pulling them out, just like someone's just pushing them in even deeper. Mate, we've just had a report that there's a beehive on the back of the car. I... I don't really know what to make of it, but uh, there's a storm on the horizon, and apparently there's bees causing some trouble up here in the car park. I've never seen anything like this in my life, and it would have to happen when I'm at work at the beach at Bondi. It'd be a good thousand bees. It looks like a beehive just on the back of this bike that's on the back of the car. 
Well, I'm not going near the bees. <laughs> <laughs> he can go near the bees if he wants to. Common sense flies out the window as Reedy turns wildlife photographer. But the bees are on the main road out of Bondi. Thousands of bees and thousands of people. It's an ugly mix. Just be careful, there's a lot of bees there. Do you want to go around the cars? There's a big beehive here. Sorry, guys. Can I just get you guys to go through the car park? Just watch the cars, but this is just a beehive here. Thank you. Stay safe, boys, all right? There's storms, there's lightning, there's bees, there's rips. It's just hyper dangerous this afternoon at Bondi. Please take care. I think there must be something. There's like a backpack strapped to the front of the bike. I'm thinking there must be something that's attracting the bees inside the backpack. Right, I'll stand by. I'll get some expert advice. Terry consults with Bondi vet Chris Brown. Got Brownie on the line. You said they're swarming around there attached to a car or something? Actually, it's like a backpack. Maybe they've got honey in the backpack or something. But it has to be seen to be believed. I think he's saying that it's, they are really wanting something to do with the backpack, but it, when they, every now and then they flare up and kind of get aggro. Probably the only way you can do that is either with the smoke, um, just sort of calm them down, or you um, you can get someone some sort of protective suit to get in there. What they haven't deterred is bizarre puns. Well, we were hoping that the storm would deter the bees. Not having much of an impact at the moment. I think the bees might be stinging in their own. <laughs> Finally, the car's owner. Is that your car? What? The one with the bike on it? It's your car? Yeah, have you seen the beehive you've got on the back of it? You're kidding. Mate, you've got a massive beehive on the back of it. <laughs> Bloody hell! Yeah. Can you, can you just grab something out of the backpack for us? <laughs> um... What's that it? I don't believe. The owner takes flight. Oh, I want to see what the bees do when he drives off. Well, I want to be in the car in the <laughs> Reedy decides to ride shotgun. Ready on ya. Okay, let's go for it. Then they approach the first speed hump. Oh, 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 oh. I thought they were going to stay on the bike all the way along and he went over the first speed hump and they just fell off like a big clump of dirt. They're still all over the ground there. Never a dull moment at this joint, ever. We're a mass murder, boy. That's a mass murder. What's the mass murder? Mass murder in the car park at Bondi. 